Good morning, everyone. Terry Harden here. How are you? Uh, pop icorn, Terry. Pop icorn. That's it. <laughs> Maybe that's what I should call myself. Pop icorn. Um, um, pop icon, Terry Harden here, which means that uh, pop culture, which is what you call uh, people from the past who have done a lot of stuff, that's me. Disney Imagineering, Ghostbusters, Men in Black, worked with a lot of people like Michael Jackson and Dolly Parton, blah, blah, blah. Google me and watch it fly. I don't even believe how much I've done, but I've done a lot. And uh, I'm happy to share it with you. How are you today? Uh, good to see you. What's up? What's up? Um, great to see you. I had a lovely weekend last weekend and so excited that uh, I'm able to share with you some of that crazy wild stuff that I've been up to, up to all kinds of crazy stuff. First of all, uh, wanted to tell you that Terry TV is a lot of my, mostly my opinions, my thoughts, and my thinking. So it's always different because uh, I've got a bit of a freeway brain. As an artist, I'm always like, ooh, squirrel. So hang in there if that's something you'd like. An e-ticket ride or an adventure, I think it's safe to say that I am exactly that. So uh, good morning, good morning. How was last weekend for you? Your Mother's Day? Or did you go to Disneyland? Were you caught in the Club 33 evacuation, uh, which turned out to be very entertaining for people on Saturday? Uh, seems a pipe or something was leaking and they didn't want it to flood. So they closed Blue Bayou, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Club 33. Must have been quite an adventure. Uh, I wasn't there, but must have been quite an adventure. Also, uh, uh, Mother's Day was fantastic. And coming up, coming up this Saturday, I really believe this is true. I haven't really looked it up, but I remember somebody telling me that this weekend is the weekend for the Strawberry Festival that usually is held in Oxnard because Oxnard, California is one of the strawberry capitals of the world. And... Um, and they're going to do it in Ventura. They're actually having their strawberry festival in Ventura, mainly because maybe it's easier to get to or a uh, better price. But I think it's at the uh, Ventura County Fairgrounds or something like that. Anyway, Google it, guys. Um, I cannot tell you exactly where it is, but I'd, li I'd love to go. And um, we'll see if I have time. Because you may or may not have heard that because of the excessive rain, the strawberries were going to be in short supply. Well, the Oxnard strawberries didn't get the memo because they're as big as softballs. I'm not kidding. A friend of mine brought me a strawberry and it looked like an apple. I knew it was a strawberry because of those little seeds on the side. But I was, whoa! Oh, my goodness. So, um that would be a really fun time to go to the strawberry festival and they make all things strawberry and they wear strawberry hats and stuff. And I don't know, dress up like strawberries or whatever. I've never been, but I've gone to buy the strawberries because the best strawberries in town and pardon me, saw something go across my window. Wanted to make sure it wasn't a giant raccoon. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, a lovely, lovely time can be uh, had by all. Uh, my Mother's Day was spent a little bit differently because I am someone who is working towards semi-retirement and my husband is retired. We talked our moms into celebrating on days that weren't Mother's Day. My mother's convalescent hospital shares a parking lot with the church. So Sunday really isn't the best day to go visit her. So we visited her on Saturday, my husband and I, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. I took her, her favorite orchids, you know, those orchids that are the plant that hang down and there's five of them coming down. My friend who's an orchid expert could tell me exactly what those are. They're absolutely beautiful. I call them butterfly orchids, but because they look to me like butterflies. But I don't know if they're actually that. Anyway, they're very pretty and my mother loves them. So I go out and get her those every year instead of a bouquet of flowers in plant. You know, she loves flowers. Don't get me wrong. She loves flowers. But she absolutely adores these lilies. Um, and so these lilies, these orchids. <coughs> I told her they were lilies and she goes, no, they're not. They're orchids. So she knows what she likes. But my husband said he just couldn't get out, get over how adorable she was as I gave her a big hunk candy bar. 
a candy bar that was very popular in the 50s and 60s, maybe 70s and 80s too. I ate them. I thought they were quite delicious. A taffy with some nuts inside. My mother loves this and she turns into about a five-year-old when she gets one. So she, the thing was, she said I should have brought her two. So that was a fun day. That was Saturday. And then on Thursday, we took my husband's mother to uh, a restaurant at the top of the Burbank Hills called the Castaways, a very, very lovely place. But my husband was kind of like, I would have liked to just touch posher. I don't know. I think his mother really loved it. So uh, uh, she enjoyed it. They have an amazing drink there called the Bell, B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And if you get a chance to try it, those of you who love Disney slash Beauty and the Beast, you got to try it. Even if you don't drink it, buy it so you can see the show. Because it's just like being at Disneyland. It has a show attached to it. And I love a good show. So that was exciting. A lot of fun. And then on Sunday, the actual Mother's Day, I had two of my dear clients come over who have commissioned me to do a one-of-a-kind piece of Jessica Rabbit. And I really, I think I've spoken with, to you guys about this before, and I'll show you pictures maybe in about a week or so, uh, maybe two. Um, but what happens is when you order a one-of-a-kind from me, which is an investment, but it can be any size, you know, um, you might have a character that nobody else wants uh that's not a big seller and so many like disney for example may not create him or her or them because they don't believe that the sales will be very good so they won't commission it or they commission your character very very happy and you would like to have for example my impressions line often has them in a curious look or a sweet look like my little stitch um um, that looks up holding the, the swan book, looks up and it's the swan to the outside and he holds it up and he looks up, you know, and he cuddles the book in the movie and then he opens it up and looks at it, but there's never really the way that I sculpted it, him looking the way I sculpted it. It's just taking the character. People wanted Stitch being more, you know, heart tugging instead of angry or happy. It kicked off... With a Remy, because I went and did the the uh, race uh, in Paris, the inaugural race in 2016. And for the girls that ran with me, I created this little Remy for them to have. And uh, ended up, a friend of mine looked at it and said, you need to make more of those. And I ended up making um, 25 Remy's and they sold out like that. So, and he was in, in bronze. Um, then I made a Remy for my Paris tour. I take people on a Paris tour. Uh, through my eyes and uh, I made a small limited edition sculpture of that and he's all painted and I should show you those because you guys may be curious about what they look like but they're charming only about this big but very very highly highly limited limit limited not eliminated limited uh, in the case of uh, a character that you might like. I know that some people have spoken to me about one of the characters from Hunchback and Hunchback has a following, but I don't know if it's big enough for me to do a limited edition of 50. So that could be something. If you have a character there that you love, you can commission me to do that. It would be yours and yours alone. Nobody else gets to have it, just you. And you can come to my studio and watch me work on it if you are so inclined. So if you're in the area and you want to come to my studio and watch it, me work on it, as Nate and his husband did, Kevin, yesterday, they were with me from one till about seven or eight in the evening and uh i made a brunch for them in the morning and we talked about all kinds of th all things fun and then we uh went to my studio and sat in my studio while i worked on jessica and she's not done yet but i'm working on jessica and they can sit and look at it and then we discussed some of the things that i'm thinking about for her and uh nate was able to tell me he'd like he made a small a little adjustment he made a he made a change to the sculpture because I was talking about she's she's uh, it's called a day at Disneyland and it's really phenomenal. And uh, I'm working on her now and it's his and his alone. And it's exclusive to uh, him, his his vision. So uh, it's really exciting to do it. And it's great to have it was great to have them there while I sculpted on it. They could watch me transform the rough 
wax coming out of the mold, which is very rough and needs to be smoothed and cleaned up and everything. They watched me sculpt it. And uh, then he could actually see the transition from clay to wax to finished. And, it, and it, again, it's not done yet. It's a lot of work for me to do it, which is why, depending on the size, it can be quite an investment. I think everything is a bit, a bit of an investment. But if you're someone who just doesn't get like, I had someone have me um, do a fairy godmother from Cinderella because nobody does the fairy godmother from the animated Cinderella. And they wanted to give it to uh, their god goddaughter or godson or you know they wanted them to have that little sculpture that might be an addition of 50 that could work i'm still thinking about that um but but you know when you're doing something that you're going to sell to everybody you want to make sure that it's popular enough that 50 will sell that's just note to you being a good business person so uh, a lot of times i'll suggest a one of a kind and then that's yours that's yours alone and uh it, it, i i usually pull out all the stops to make it spectacular. So if you have something like that, that you've always wanted and nobody seems to be creating, um, feel free to suggest it to me. And if enough people like it, it becomes an addition of 50. And uh, if it's something that you love, but doesn't um, seem to hit the mark, then, uh, then you can just say to yourself, I'd like to do a one of a kind and we'll discuss it as to what it would cost and what sizes and what's your budget. Okay, that's what I do for people all the time. And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be just Disney. I did an amazing nativity for a lovely woman. Um, her her uh, minister did some wonderful things for her and her husband, helped them get through some very tough times. And she wanted to create a uh, uh, menagerie, uh, a... Uh, uh, Oh, why can't I think of the name? Anyway, uh, a nativity scene. There it is. Yay. A nativity scene for him. And what she did was she took wood from a hundred year old barn and made the actual structure while I sculpted the figures. And they're based on a very famous sculptor, a very famous painter. And she gave it to him and he didn't know what to say. He was very, very thrilled. So it can be anything you want. Um, think about it. I was, before the pandemic, someone was looking for me to design a man cave for him that looked like the cave that I did for Dragon's Lair in Paris. So uh, when I say anything, I did a Donald Duck that crashes through the wall and he has a chef's hat and his hands will hold, you know, you can put a spatula, you can take that out and put a rolling pin or you can take that out and put fork and it was crashing in through the kitchen of somebody who was doing a designer kitchen. So like I said, one of a kind means it, it can be anything, anything, anywhere, everything, everywhere, and anything, anywhere, all at once. Clever, huh? <laughs> in any case, that's what happened yesterday, and it was a joy to work with people in the room. Many sculptors or painters may not like being observed, but you know the ones that do. Noah likes to demonstrate for people. Tom Matusik, who just got a, a beautiful, beautiful... Uh, he showed some beautiful work that he's doing. He's becoming very popular in the industry today as a painter, and I want to congratulate him. I said I'm gonna know, gonna look at him and go, I knew you win. He's really starting to do, you know, his his career is starting to really go, and I'm really excited about that. Um, many artists who I have discussed with, not that it was my fault. He was well on his way uh, before he ever met me, but uh, it's great to see how successful he is, and. Uh, it's exciting, but I do these one of a kinds and I will continue to do one of a kinds even as I become. When I say semi-retired, it means I'll be doing those one of a kinds more than anything. People, I hope, will reach out to me and say, I need this for this and that for that. And if I like you, then we'll we'll work together. So uh, that was the most fun with uh, uh, Kevin and Nate. It was just a really lovely time. And we ended it by going to a Japanese restaurant I'm very fond of. Uh, because there was good parking and I knew it wasn't necessarily the first on people's list for a Mother's Day dinner because yesterday was officially Mother's Day. So we knew everything was going to be crowded and awful. But this was lovely, intimate, quiet. We got to sit at a back table and just visit together and have some uh, hot sake and uh, bento boxes. And it was wonderful.
It was wonderful. So a great day with the amazing Nate and Kevin. I'm very, very excited and honored to have had them in my shop while I created the piece that is their dream piece. They told me, I'm very touched. They said they've never seen anything like it. it takes their breath away. Uh, what artist doesn't like to hear that, right? So um, how was your weekend? Um, were you there near Pirates of the Caribbean, Blue Bayou or Club 33 when you were, were you evacuated? Um, how was your Mother's Day? Uh, how was your weekend? Um, this was really a lovely, lovely, joyful weekend as I returned to my studio. Now, you may have noticed under the Terry TV subject matter, I said, returning to my studio finally. I had been out of my studio for over nine months as I took care of my parents. And one of the things that I realized, and this may be happening to you, so let me just share it with you right now here on Terry TV. And that is that when you start to feel like you're not all four wheels on the ground, you know, something is off, but you can't put your finger on it. You're feeling a little anxious, melancholy. Who knows? You may not be able to put a label to it. It could be like me, where as much as I love my parents and I'm completely devoted to them and whatever they need, I am there for them. Whoosh. I'm there, as many, I'm sure many of you are as well. Uh, um, I wasn't doing my art. And uh, I started to feel kind of, I, I can't, I thought I was more edgy, crankier, not so kind. And I love to lead with kindness. That may sound kind of smarmy, but it's the truth. I love to to make people's days happier, funny, silly. I mean, that's just me. I like to, to, I, I love to be a joyful noise if at all possible. And I was, I was a joyful noise, but not so joyful. <laughs> kind of like when you listen to an orchestra and a whole section is missing. <laughs> You're playing the Pink Panther sequence and the brass is all gone. No horns. <laughs> that would be awful. So uh, this is what I was feeling like. I was feeling like I was a bit, I, I, I was, running on three wheels, maybe only two wheels and no four wheels down. And I really had to think about what was it was missing in my life. And I realized I was neglecting the art side of me, which is part of my DNA. It is not just something I love to do, but it's what I was born to do. So when I don't do it, it affects your personality. It affects who you are. It affects your outlook. It affects your mindset. It's just nothing but a bunch of effects. And you try to be your sweet, joyful, sparkly self. And your friends aren't quite sure what's the matter with you. And they wonder, are you okay? And you say, yeah, I feel fine. But then you don't really take time to reflect. Many people will meditate. For me, I just need to get in there and draw, sketch, paint. Or in this case, my favorite thing, which is to sculpt. So I painted for the Chuck Jones Red Dot society auction. And that sort of broke the ice for me to get back into uh, doing what I love. And uh, once that was over, I called Nate and told him he'd waited long enough that Jessica was going to get done. And I'm very, very excited to report that. Uh, what a joy to work on this piece. I'm so proud of it. I really, you know, as an artist, you will find there are pieces you do that are great, that are amazing. Like those of you who don't know, the Dragon's Lair Paris is one of my greatest achievements, I will say. I fought for her to be animated. I fought for her and the cave to happen in Paris. And thank God for Tony Baxter seeing my passion and understanding and awarding me the chance to design that attraction. And so I did in Paris. And if you get to see her, uh, one of the things I will caution you is to make sure that that attraction is open and available for you to see. OK, it's being uh, according to one of the people on my Patreon page, uh, Liz Reed. She said that it's closed till the end or the beginning of June. But just be sure you check that, because the last thing you want to do is to go see the dragon and then she's unavailable for you. As two friends of mine stated, they went to see the Nautilus walkthrough exhibit and they got a picture of the fin through the boards because it's being refurbished. But hey, thank God it's being kept because in 2016, when we went to see it, they were thinking about getting rid of it. And we're so happy that whatever happened, that they've decided to refurbish it. It must have become very, very popular. It is my husband's favorite film, 20,000 Leaves Under the Sea, and he loves the Nautilus. 
In fact, many people asked me about a series that Disney was thinking of doing or a movie that they're thinking of doing. And my husband says that the Nautilus people, and if you are a 20,000 Leagues Nautilus submarine aficionado or fan, maybe you can chime in over here and let me know. But uh, he says, don't touch that Harper Goff design if you know what's good for you. Don't touch the design. You can do another movie, but make sure you have that same design. So isn't that interesting? Yeah. Um, it is a gorgeous design. It is a phenomenal design, and I don't know why you would change it. In fact, I do that salute to Harper Goff, honestly. But uh, my husband says that that seems to be the stopping point, that many people who love this movie do not want you to touch the Harper Goff design of the Nautilus. So uh, that's the deal on that one. And I'm doing a one of a kind for my husband of the great organ that can be found on that ship. Um, it's got a heck of a lot of pipes. Oh, <laughs> but that gets done after Nate's. Jessica gets done first and then we'll take a look at that organ. I also have a few paintings I'd like to do. So I'm looking forward to that. And I have a wedding anniversary coming up. My husband and I will have been married 20 years as of next January, 2024. And we're trying to figure out where to go because smart people budget. <laughs> where is that smart person? <laughs> anyway, I want to budget for it. So I'm trying to figure out where I want to stay and what I want to do. I'd love to stay there for about five days and just really enjoy my husband and I. And we were we were uh, married up north in the Calistoga Valley, but we honeymooned in Hawaii and we're both thinking maybe Hawaii would be nice to, to return to and uh, uh, honeymoon. And I thought maybe a, a home, you know, a lot of these places now have, you know, these luxury homes you can stay in, but I don't know. I, I would love just us to be pampered like we were on our honeymoon. We were seriously pampered. Um, so I'm thinking about that. But so lots going through my head here on Terry TV. You can see there's lots happening, lots going on. I will tell you, I really do not talk about politics. I think you guys have a lot of places where you can talk about politics. And I rarely interview simply because you guys do it so well that I'm I, I'm being asked on my tribe to interview a couple people. And I might do it for them, but it's not going to be the norm. It's just not. Um, something I'm interested in doing. Forgive me. I have the phone on for my dad and uh, Scam Likely is the only one that seems to call me right now, which is a good thing. My dad is doing great, improving well, and I'm hoping he'll be, he'll be coming home to his house soon. Fingers crossed. I just keep... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, he's asked for some cheesecake and some Sprite, so I'll take that up to him soon. And uh, yeah, I, I, I have this thing that once you hit 80 years old, all bets are off in what you want to do, okay, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. So what I'm finding out of my friends who are over 80 is they love sugar. My parents love sugar sugar. So my dad loves cheesecake and Sprite and my mother loves anything sugar. So coffee and sugar, licorice, 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 big hunk, licorice, big hunk, big hunk, big hunk, licorice, uh, and strawberries. And except for she doesn't want the strawberries covered in chocolate. She wants plain strawberries. So I'll be going to the strawberry festival, getting her those baseball size strawberries so she can enjoy those. Um, but on my Patreon page, and let me just share that with you. I haven't shared that with you in a while. Patreon.com slash Cherry Harden is a place where you can get more in depth and learn more about myself, but also more important, tell me about you and add your voice to a great group of people who have like minds. And by that, I mean, they are positive. We're upbeat. We share the love and it's not always sharing the love. Sometimes a person has something they're dealing with that is upsetting them emotionally or confusing them or what do I do about this? And we talk about all of it. I cannot send my job, for example, says a person on the Patreon page. My job is driving me crazy. How do I shift from that job to something that I love to do? And basically what I tell you is it's a lot like soup. Don't dump the soup that's making you money right now out, but let's start to add some ingredients to what you want to do on your own in the cracks around it so that you can make the leap once the lily pads are level, 
right? Then you can jump from the one that's driving you nuts to the one you're doing well and continue to rise on that one. But never throw the baby out with the bathwater. You need to live, you need to eat. But I can show you how to do what you love. And we do that on this page, the Patreon page, for as little as $5 a month. Uh, you can be a part of it. And we do a Zoom call once a week. Thank you. We do a Zoom call once a week, and uh, it's special and wonderful and fabulous. So I hope you will join us here. Go here to learn more. Woohoo! There you go. Yay. All right. So let's see what everyone has to say. Diane is watching. Ah! No. <laughs> Great to see you, Diane. Uh, good morning and happy Monday, Terry and everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Or says Joe Penny. Joe, I'm glad to see you. I had a question and now I can't remember what the flipping question was, but I will be asking it of you maybe the next, oh, I can't remember what it was. For the life of me, I said, I know I can ask Joe and he can tell me, um, but I'll have to wait till next time, Joe. And maybe it'll come to me. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. How's Rocket? Rocket is amazing. And Rocket fell in love with Nate uh, and Kevin, but hi, Kevin. Nate, my new friend. Uh, so yeah, it was really cute. It was really cute. Uh, Joe says, I hope everyone had a safe and pleasant Mother's Day and remember it, remembered the Festival of St. George. George Lucas's 79th birthday was it. Really? Isn't that something? Well, I celebrated him by sculpting. That was nice, huh? Yeah. Yay. Um, I started calling it that, and I say it's one of the Holiest days in the holy month of Star Wars, it's tongue in cheek. No, I think it's darling. I think it's really darling. As uh, we're coming up on the actual anniversary of Star Wars opening, May 25th. So it's kind of nice that his birthday is was actually yesterday, the 14th. Kind of a nice little sweetheart deal. You know, I don't really delve into people's uh, privately that much, but I think this is a great piece of trivia. Should have known it actually, yeah? Yeah, you should go to the Di you should go to Disney uh and see it has a Nautilus too. Yes, yes. There are well Disneyland, Paris and Disney Seas. Okay? So when I went in 2005 to Disney Seas, Michael, uh I brought pictures back and when I sold my Star Wars collection in 2007 for several figures, we'll say over 5. Um I had my husband put a pin in the map and I was going to take him anywhere for a month. He chose Japan. We started at the top of Japan, worked over down, ending in Tokyo Disneyland. And he moved like a continental shelf very slowly. Tons of pictures. Love that. In fact, we got a special walkthrough of a lot of the um, displays in uh, Tokyo Disney Seas uh, where the Nautilus scenario was. So it was very, very awesome. He loved it. He is I'm really, really obsessed with that. In fact, when I went in 2005, I found a Nautilus, you may have heard of it, Michael, where it's the brass one, the bronze one, where uh, you move the boat and it will make the propeller go. And then another one, you can turn the lights on it. It's stunning. It is my husband's favorite piece. I hand carried it back from Tokyo uh, in 2005. And then in 2007, when we went... Uh, there wasn't another one. He was hoping for more Nautilus stuff, but uh, uh, it had all but disappeared. So um, he loves it. He loves oh, some of the things I've able, been able to find for him, including Disney put out a replica of the ride vehicle that used to be in Walt Disney World and a cast member. Um, a per, someone from Walt Disney Pictures was able to grab that for me. So I would, I'm just I'm always looking. <laughs> for him. When I was in Paris during a tour I took people on, I found 20,000 Leagues in French. And it was a first edition, I believe. So I got him that too. So it's just amazing. Uh, the 20,000 Leagues restaurant in, uh, in a restaurant in Paris. Uh, my husband went there. We went there and ate. He loved it. Uh, many Parisians say the food wasn't that great. I think they're crazy. The food was wonderful. And uh, we had a killer kicking good time. It was so, so wonderful. And when I went and took my tour there, uh, my tour group there, uh, my tour guide, uh, bless his heart, uh, we saw a bottle from the Jules Verne restaurant, a beautiful bottle. And uh, it we negotiated to get the bottle. And I hand carried that back to my husband. So he, he just... <laughs> 
<laughs> Big Harper golf fan photographs, everything. Um, so it is a, it is a marvelous, marvelous, uh, piece of design that he lives by and loves. So, uh, yay. Right. So it was a great experience and uh, you're absolutely right, Michael. I have, I love it. I cannot believe how marvelous, uh, some of these other parks have created some of these things based on what they know and love. And that Disney Seas is absolutely magical. So don't go to Japan without seeing Disney Seas. It is absolutely stunning. This coming Sunday is May 21st, Empire Day, when we celebrate the uh, episode five, The Empire Strikes Back, 1980. Yeah. Uh, Terry prepares for this day every year by camping outside of her house for three days prior, <laughs> commemorating her effort in the original. Yes. That's a good idea. I'll get started. Is it showing anywhere to celebrate this weekend? That's my favorite one of all of them is Empire Strikes Back. It's my favorite one. I mean, I could watch it here, but wouldn't it be fun for a bunch of us to get together and see it on the big screen? Ooh, that would be so fun. I don't know. Joe, you're adorable. Don't know what I'd do without you, my friend. All right, guys, it's been 30 minutes. I'm going to take off here because I am going to one of my favorite places. I'm meeting a friend at the amazing Wing Hop Fong, which is an amazing uh, department store. I don't know if you call it a department store, more like sort of a grocery store slash. It's a lot like Sears. That's all I can tell you. It's really great. It has wonderful foods from um, many Asian countries. It has sakis from all over the world. It has herbs from all over the world for anything that ails you. It is super, super cool. And I need some more tea. Plus, I haven't been there in so long. I'm dying to go and see it. I can't wait. So I love you guys. Have a lovely, lovely week. Enjoy your time. And I will uh, be showing you something pre-recorded on Friday. I hope you liked last Friday's, which talked a little bit about the Red Dot charity auction and my process. I hope you took a look at the canvas because next year you guys can be a part of this um, event. And all I ask is that you tell them that I told you about it because it is a super, super cool thing. So please, 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 please share because it's really, really cool. What does he say? Bring me sake. <laughs> I love you, man. Uh, wow. Just 30 minutes today. Okay, everyone have a good week. Yes. I'm just keeping it tight because, uh, my friend had Monday free and I got to go to Wing Hunk Fong, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I will share with you a little video of this amazing store if I can, okay? But hugs and loves to you guys. It's it's short today. I have a Jessica to work on. I'll work to get you a little sample of what's happening there because Nate has told me he, I can share that piece with you. But uh, it's a day in a sculptor's life, and it's a sculptor's week, and you can see that I'm really sunny, like, for real. So hugs and kisses, you guys rock. Um, Yay, yes, Diane is with the tribe, and tonight we're having Zoom. We're having a special Terry's Tribe Zoom event. So patreon.com slash Terry Harden if you want to be a part of it, and I will send you the link. Mwah! Come join us. We'd love to have you. We are a great group of people, super, super fun, and I will see you very, very soon. Good week, everybody. Enjoy yourself. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Talk to you soon. Hugs and love.